Hi, I'm Jess, and these are my fifth boots. Well, actually, they're my sixth, but I started them as my fifth boot. I started calling these um, Chili Number no. Five. Um, this is my first really New Mexico boot, and next to these, I think the only possession I really care about is this poster of Ride the Pink Horse, which was filmed in Santa Fe in 1947. And so nothing's more New Mexico, and this is Zobra up there, a vintage postcard from the 70s. Um, more than anything else, there's nothing more New Mexico than red and green chili. And so this is my first iteration of doing a chili boot. And as I've gone along since I started these, I've learned again a whole lot more uh, from my teacher and just just kind of going for it and getting as far as I can and making a better boot each time and this is also my first three-part boot so I want to show what that looks like so a three-part boot is where the back piece here is one solid piece there's no separate um, counter like you typically see on a typical four-part boot so uh, I like this because it kind of just gives you a really beautiful canvas to work with and that's what boots are to me. It's it's not really about like fancy leather for me. It's 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 not about exotics. To, it's just about the simple leather. I really love this leather and yeah this is what I want to just keep working with because it's just a great it's a great material um, and uh, it's just beautiful. It just does a lot of good stuff. So so on the back there we have our New Mexico green chili and we have our red chili. And we are the only state, New Mexico, uh, that has a state question, which is obviously red or green. So I kind of called these red or green and blue corn chips. And I also called them chili number five. And to people in New Mexico, they're red or green. And I guess to anybody else, anywhere else, they are just the chili boots. Um, so like the Anaheim chilies that are like the long chilies that make all our beautiful green chili. So that's what's on the back. And that's why that three-part boot really made it easy to do, like a really beautiful design on the on the back there. So, um, and the other thing that I do is every time um, I work on these projects, I'm working to do this with as little material as possible. So I don't waste anything. I save like all my trocitos, all my little pieces that I have um, to just like upcycle them into another pair of inlay boots so like I had a few pieces of the green I had that that nice orangey burnt red color I don't think it looks that way on this video exactly what it actually is in real life but and then I didn't have enough chocolate brown to do like a tall pair and I was like well I'm just gonna try and just do another short pair and also since it was a three-part boot I wanted to just try to just do that as a just as a three-part boot, just a shorty, just a nice cute, like, because historically the peewee boots, the shorty boots, um, and I like both. I like, I like the tall boots and I like the, the short boots, so, and then I wanted the, the pull straps to kind of match and stuff, and, you know, I see where, like, I want to make improvements and things, and I learned a lot, because I always say this, just going through the process again and again, and, um, and so, and this is what the bottoms look like. We did brown on these, um, I think usually I've done black so far, but I really like the brown on this. And they do have the wooden, the little uh, lemon wood pegs in the bottom. And sometimes those are omitted now when people do factory made boots. But I think it's really important to do something like handcrafted like that. And I just think they're beautiful. So um, I really just love this art form. But I also like it because it's functional. And I tend to be a very practical person, like the things I wear usually a really simple stuff because I'm exercising the dogs or whatever but I love that you can just put a pair of boots on like this and um and I'm as in quest of making smaller boots for my friends with smaller feet um I started with the size nine for myself and then I did a nine wide and that really taught me a little bit about how the feel of a boot is and then the kinds of different insoles that you can slip in there um and I'm like a nine medium um width or and then so I did the nine nine wide also for another pair of boots and so I could feel what that feels like so I can start making something that really isn't just looking beautiful but also fits another 
person's foot. So these are actually a size eight. So we've come down one size, and then with my next ones, or in the future here, I'll keep getting working on my modelos, my templates to make um, uh, the smaller size feet so I can have boots that fit some of my friends with smaller feet than me. Um, so I kind of just figured that's the easiest way to learn is just kind of start with my foot size and, and then the wide one and, and keep kind of going from there. Um, but you know, New Mexico's food thing, it's, it's, uh, food is such a, a special thing for different regions of the world. And, and the green chili thing, yeah, we really harp on it a lot here in New Mexico about how we can't live without green chili. And, you know, I become like a salsa, like connoisseur, like I, I would never buy a salsa that wasn't made in New Mexico. And I have the different ones that I think are fantastic. And uh, yeah, I, we love that we have these sections in the grocery store that are just local salsas, local New Mexico chilies. Uh, and and, uh, and I think about foods in other parts of the world that I've tried and, and uh, a friend even in New Orleans going on about their, and I love the beignets. I gotta say, I love the beignets, but talking about the, the po' boy sandwiches and, and he was like, it's the bread, it's the bread. and. Um, to me, it's like, it wasn't really that exciting, but you know, it was okay. I mean, it was good food, I, I tried it. But here, yeah, I'm like, we're like, yeah, we gotta have our green chili, we gotta have our red chili, or we gotta have Christmas chili. And it's like, oh, I couldn't live anywhere else because I, I need to eat this food. And uh, yeah, I grew up eating this food. And uh, it's different than Tex-Mex. It's like New Mexico food is different and you really just can't even get anything like it in Colorado either. And so, Chili boots are just something that I think resonates with a lot of people, whether you live in New Mexico or even know what green chili is here to us. I mean, the world knows peppers. There's peppers around the world. And I just think, gosh, peppers make all the food wonderful. But I did have a, um, and it's part of our, our main, um, like the breakfast, the breakfast burrito. And in New Mexico, that's like something you eat all the time. And I did have my uh, a South African boyfriend and uh, when I was living there in South Africa, he would say like, it's not like you can just really like eat the land of the burrito. I don't know what goes on there, but it's not like you can have like a breakfast burrito for like breakfast, lunch and dinner. Uh, and then like I was trying to make pico de gallo over there in, um, in South Africa and I would start s just dicing up my onions and everything. Like I never slice anything. I know he would always be going, hey, do you guys like just, do you just dice things there? Like, do you just, in New Mexico, do you just like dice it? Or do you just, can never like cut a, like a slice of onion or something? And I'm like, no, we, we dice everything. We dice it. We dice our tomatoes. We add cilantro. We dice our onions. And so, yeah, those are kind of the things I think about, I guess, when I, when I put, put these together and drew them and finally came up with like a chili that looks like a good chili, I think. So that was important to me that the chili was like really Kind of had that like flavor and and I love inlay what you can do by just like adding like a little bit of um, the texture that you can get like the light the way it shines on a chili pepper in the sun and just yeah that kind of gloss that looks so and then like Santa Fe blue corn chips I, that's part of my take back Santa Fe I guess thing too is uh, just blue corn chips and I remember talking to somebody that asked me like is the corn really blue and I was like yeah it is it's it is a purpley bluish color and I had this color um, I had just a couple colors and I was like oh I love that that blue will really work so I just had to figure out how to incorporate it so I'll definitely do another chili and um, yeah I will uh, I'll definitely do a tall chili at some point too but some version of this, I really like the essence of, of what these boots, um, they mean a lot to me. They really do. They, they're just, you know, through everything I've been through, it's like, they just, they mean a lot as a handmade product. And um, to me, something that's like, you just can't duplicate it in the sense of it being automated. And I guess that's why I'm like, really, I know inlay takes a lot. It's a lot of work to do an inlay boot. Um, it's not a quick and easy thing. And and I see some of the ways people expedite making a pair of boots and like, okay, those are kind of cool, but uh, yeah, I, I tend to do everything in my life the hard way, it seems like. And so these came out pretty good overall, I guess. So, um, but otherwise I'm, I'm proud of them as a, as a design and uh, as a craft that I keep learning. Uh, so that is chili number five uh, or my sixth pair of boots, uh, my first three part boot uh my first women's size eight 
and um, uh, red or green or Christmas and blue corn chips or chips and salsa. I guess those are my names for these boots. Um, anyways, I really had a great time making these. Thanks for watching.